Hello chess friends, welcome to my channel. Basically, my channel is all about discussing about chess games and not just chess games, but more specifically about ideas, about concrete ideas, about abstract thinking and how chess players think uh, and everything about it. So today we're going to have a look at a brilliant chess game played by Jose Raul Capablanca, the chess machine, the great chess player, the great chess genius from Cuba. And this game is not going to disappoint you because there is a great idea which Kappa plays, which it's basically just one single move, but it is so attractive and it basically has, uh, it will take you into the mind of how Kappa Blanca thought. So let's have a look at this position. It's white to play. White was Kappa Blanca. You can see the knight on f6, the black knight on f6 is not comfortable. That's a pin. That's a nearly uh, absolute pin. I mean, not absolute. It's a relative pin, obviously, but uh, it's very difficult for black to untangle. To, to, to untangle from this kind of a pin. So what would you play here as white? You are already pressing. How would you continue here as white? Go ahead, put yourself in Kappa's shoes and try to find the move that white played here. All right, so as you've already read in the video up over here, it's, up, it's going to be about abstract thinking. Now, what is abstract thinking? Ab basically, there are uh, multiple ways of thinking. Uh, most of you who are not grandmasters will think, well, the grandmasters are like calculating machines. They always calculate every single thing. The fact is they don't. They don't calculate every single thing. In fact, most of the time they rely on abstract thinking and uh, sometimes they don't even calculate for two to three moves. It's, it's really like that. They have the ability to calculate for long, long variations, but when necessary, they do always calculate abstractly. And what does that mean? They look at positions like uh, just to give an example, Kappa would say, look at this position and he would say, well, what would happen if I can get a piece, if I can get my king all the way up here to the e5 square? The thing is, I would win, right? If I can just pick up that king from g1, I can put it on e5, I would win the game. And then he would try to find ways to get it there. So that is how it works. Basically, it is a, uh, he uses his imagination, his abstract thinking and build a bridge from his abstract thinking, from his imagination into reality. And that is what is going to be today's uh, theme all about. The move that Kappa Banka played here is extremely brilliant and shows his uh, class. Here he plays the move pawn to f3. And this is, the, this is the move I want to feature in today's video. It's a little pawn move, but it has a great idea. It's, it's, it's speed of great idea, which you'll be uh, completely surprised. Now, what's the point behind it? Apart from restricting this knight, which obviously already can't move and the king can't get out of the pin. So what's the point behind this? The point is black is tied up here. He hardly has any counterplay and white is basically planning to play, continue along the lines. King to f2, pawn to g4, king to g3, king to f4 and finally at the end he would like to put his king on e5. In there, if the king reaches on e5, we would be definitely winning the knight. And there seems to be no other way for black to get out of this except for sacrificing material. So let's have a look at how this went on. In this position, uh, black went on to play h6, gave a pawn in order to untangle himself and uh, Capablanca. We'll see what exactly what he does. But before that, let's have a look at what happens instead of this if he goes for something like rook c7. There is a point behind this move. Black would very much like to un untangle himself and he would do this by the moves bishop to b7, uh, bishop to c8, rook to b7, rook to b6 and the, once the rook is over here, he would like to protect the knight. So that is his point. He would like to protect uh, over there, the knight over there. So Black has a plan. Although very passive, he does have a plan. So here we can continue with the move. King to f2. Excellent idea. Marching the king forward. Bishop to c8. As we have discussed, the idea is simply to put rook b7 and rook to b6 in order to put more defense to the knight on f6. White again continues with his plan. g4, gaining more territory, gaining more space. This is very important. Now we have even restricting the knight, even more restricting the bishop. Black pieces hardly have anything to uh, play here. And Kappa was the original uh, player uh, who used to squeeze the, the blood out of the stone. Nowadays, we see Magnus doing it, but obviously it was Capablanca who uh, pioneered it and in a way mastered it, mastered the skill to perfection. So let's have a look at it. Bishop to d7, 
king to g3, rook to b7, rook to c1 takes control of the open file, rook to b6. Well, now the knight on f6 does have a defense, but there are some problems. What if we can put our rook on c7, bring our king all the way to e5, then something might happen. Then we might actually threaten to capture the knight due to tactical reasons. That is exactly what Kappa tries here. Would have tried here. Rook to c7. Now, here we play king to e8, getting out of the pin. There were two pins on this position, one with the bishop, one with the rook. Black was ex black was an extreme uh, desperation. He had to get out, get out of this. That's why he played king e8. And now the play could continue something like rook to a7. These are basically engine lines, which I have no doubt that Capablanca would have played because it's exactly his type of position. When you have a position which you are very uh, comfortable with, you do play with accuracy. So, bishop into f6. Rook into f6, g5, pushing the rook away, finally getting in our king in the game, followed by simply king to e5. You get that pawn in the center, and white is simply going to convert. It's not going to be a big deal. He will just exchange some pieces, and this is a completely winning king and pawn in game. This is end games, guys. This is the strength of Capablanca. And I have no doubt that Capablanca, if he would have followed this variation, would have easily went on to win. But after the move, Pawn to f3. Basically, black did not uh, black did not went on with something like rook to c7, but rather decided to radically solve the position uh, to get out, uh, rid of his problems, and he played a very energetic move h6 here. Now, what's the point behind this? Basically, the bishop is attacked. If the bishop steps out of the spin, then black is totally fine. If he goes to h4, then you just play g5, and again black is fine because there is no longer the pin. So white should definitely capture the pawn and basically this was captured in the in the game and after knight d7 uh, I would I would basically white uh, black got away with the pin but white simply went on to win the game it was a long game I would I don't want to show you all the conversion part but the one move I wanted to focus in this position was the move pawn to f3 with an idea of playing g4 king f2 king g3 king f4 king e5 now that was something of class and that's called as abstract thinking you don't always calculate in every single position in fact you have to use your imagination as a bridge between reality and then you have to use that imagination to create that reality if possible of course you can't think of everything anything else or you can't think of any random move it has to have some logic to it of course so this was the great idea of kappa blanca obviously after winning a pawn on f6 kappa uh, hardly have any problem converting you can check out the entire game it's a long game so i don't i didn't go into this but i just wanted to focus on this beautiful idea of playing pawn to f3 with such a brilliant idea and uh, black was totally a spectator for the rest of the game white went on to win quite easily so hope you enjoyed this uh chess video basically there was not a sacrifice basically there was not a great great uh amount of sacrifices or spectacular moves but this planning this 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 abstract thinking is what impressed me the most and f3 is definitely an excellent move it's a double exclamation mark for no doubt so until next time see you guys